Right, next to Scotland, where the First Minister says the UK government is cutting too much and too fast. Let's talk to James Cook, who's our correspondent in Edinburgh. Hi, James. Hi Victoria, thanks very much indeed. Yes, we've been hearing from the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, here today. She's been making a speech focusing on the economy and that speech has been talking about what she called the scale and the speed of deficit reduction, the scale and the speed of public spending cuts at a UK level. The First Minister suggested that they needed to be slowed down and that in fact cutting so quickly public spending would harm the economy. That was one of her messages. She was also talking about the referendum on the European Union on Britain's membership of that but we can talk to the First Minister herself about these issues just now because she joins us thanks very much indeed for being with us here this morning um, first of all then on public spending cuts David Cameron would argue I'm sure that he's been elected with a clear majority across the UK to bring down the deficit and to do so by bringing in these cuts well, David Cameron won the election UK wide he's the Prime Minister I don't deny that obviously I don't deny that but he didn't win the election in Scotland in fact the Conservatives had uh, the lowest share of the vote in Scotland that they've had for many many a long year the SNP won the election in Scotland fairly decisively on the basis of a pledge and a manifesto to argue the anti-austerity case so that is what we will do yes it's important to get the deficit down and the debt down and we've always accepted that but we need to do that at a pace and in a way that also allows us to invest in infrastructure and skills in our public services because these things really matter to growing our economy we know from the experience of the last five years that the depth of the cuts that George Osborne imposed held back growth in the economy and the faster we can grow our economy the quicker we'll get the deficit down so we'll be making the alternative case to the UK government and interestingly they can still meet the objectives of the Charter of Budget Responsibility, even if they increase spending over their current plans. They're looking to cut much deeper and faster than they actually have to do, and I think that's wrong. But isn't the problem that the that Scotland voted to stay within the United Kingdom and the United Kingdom has voted for this party with its plans. So why should it take cognizance of what one part of the United Kingdom says when it, it's governing for the whole of the United Kingdom? Well, you know, I think if David Cameron is serious about listening to people right across the UK, then he will want to take cognizance of how people in Scotland voted because it was him during the referendum on independence last year who said that Scotland should vote to stay in the UK and its voice would be listened to as part of the UK. Scotland uh, voted in large numbers not everybody in Scotland voted SNP, but 50% of people in Scotland voted SNP, which is a much higher percentage than those across the UK who voted Conservative. Now, this is about debate and democratic discussion. We're putting forward a sensible, responsible alternative to the Conservative austerity plans that would still allow the deficit and debt to be reduced but enable us also to invest in what we need to do to, to grow innovation and infrastructure to get our economy to be more productive. Because the more we do that, the more we grow our revenues and the faster actually we can pay down the deficit. How concerned are you about the prospect of leaving the European Union? Uh, and secondly, do you think that there should be some reform of Britain's membership of the European Union, as Mr Cameron argues? Yeah, I mean, I've always said Europe and the European Union is not perfect, and I don't think anybody argues that it is. We want to see reforms that, you know, mean that Europe doesn't interfere in things that should rightly be the, uh, the, the affairs of domestic governments. We want to see greater transparency and subsidiarity at the heart of European decision making. And if you can't get that, should Britain oh, leave no, the European no, Union? I, I believe Scotland and the UK's interests are best served by being within. Well, the it's European a weak Union. negotiating position, well, that, isn't it? You know, 300,000 jobs in Scotland are dependent in one way or another on membership of the single market. Now, it would be folly, in my view, to put that at risk in the way David Cameron is. So we don't believe there should be a referendum, but we accept a referendum is now inevitable. We'll be firstly arguing as that legislation goes through Westminster that it should contain a double majority provision which would mean that before the UK could come out of Europe England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland would have to vote for it and secondly we will be making the positive case for the UK and Scotland as part of that to stay within the European Union. We'll argue for reform from within but Scotland and the UK's interests in my view are best served by being within. Just finally, and quite briefly, if you don't mind, tell us what you were talking about here today, which is this business pledge. Um, what is it and how achievable is it? I mean, for example, you want companies to move on to the living wage. Some smaller companies are worried that's not really achievable. Well, we've got a 
higher proportion of companies already paying the living wage in Scotland than is the case UK-wide, but we want to do more. The Business Pledge is asking companies to sign up to measures to boost innovation and investment in greater productivity, but also better workforce practices, a living wage, no use of exploitative zero-hours contracts, and investment in the skills of the young workforce. And underpinning it is this belief that if we do things that create a fairer society, enable everybody to contribute, then in turn we have a stronger and more prosperous economy. Economic prosperity and fairness are not enemies of each other, they actually go hand in hand. Thank you very much indeed. Nicola Sturgeon, Scottish National Party leader and First Minister of Scotland. And I think what we're seeing here and what we expect to see from the SNP over the next four or five years is an attempt to stake out a position as a main party of opposition at Westminster taking on the government.